everyone! For this week's video, I decided that I would be doing a Copic marker tutorial. Now, I am by no means an expert with Copic markers. Um, however, I figured if this could help somebody, might as well tell you what I do know. So this is just how I personally blend Copic markers, and there are certainly other ways to do it. This is just the way that I find works best for me. So first off, I'm going to show you on the lid of each Copic, there's usually one or two letters, and at minimum two numbers. So the letters are referring to the color family. So this one would be blue-violet. Those are pretty self-explanatory. BG is blue-green, B is blue, R, Y is red, yellow, and so on. Now, the numbers are a little bit different. The first number here, in this one, the zero, is referring referring to the saturation of the color. So it starts at 0 and goes to 9. The saturation is going to be very saturated at a 0 and less saturated at a 9. The next, the next number is the brightness. So at an 8, this isn't very bright, but because it's very saturated, it's like a very deep purple. So, um, Again, with this one, 0 is going to be the brightest, and 9 would be the least bright. So for an example, I have here my BV00, and you can see the difference. They're both highly saturated, but this one is going to be a lot brighter. Or in this case, I, would, I guess I would say lighter. Now when I shade with Copic markers, I found the, easy, the easiest thing to do is to start with the darkest color because you'll have to, if you start with the lightest color, you'll have to go back over with the lighter color again to blend it out if you use the lighter color first then go in with the dark. Whereas if you start with the darker color, I, I don't know if this is true or not, I feel like I save ink though. So, some people, when they shade, they'll just go in and they'll make a block and then try to blend it out. What I find works better for me is if I use this flicking motion. When I do this, it's at the beginning of the stroke, it's going to be a lot darker, whereas at the end of the stroke, it's going to be lighter, which makes it a little bit easier to blend out. Then, after I lay down my darkest color, I go back with my next darkest, which would be BV04, and I go into the darker area, and then flick out. And I just kind of keep doing that until it blends to the point where I think it looks good. Sometimes you do have to go over a couple of times just to get rid of any like dark lines that you'll find. Like this one still kind of has it right down the middle there, but it's not too noticeable. Okay, And then we'll go in with my BV02, and some people like to use the chisel tips of these markers. I, however, prefer the brush tip. It helps with the kind of the flick motion that I use. Sometimes you kind of have to come back further to get it all to blend nicely. Okay. 
and then once that's done use the lightest color my BV00 now on this one I usually like to start at the back and then do the flicking motion into the neck the second lightest color I believe my marker is actually starting to run out of ink a little bit. I'll have to get a refill for that one. But it's not the nicest gradient in the world, but it, it's not too bad. So, now that is an example using colors all from the same level of brightness and from the same color family. Now what I'm going to show you is an example using colors that are a little bit different. I have with me B28, B24, and B16. Now with these ones it's a little bit different. You see the B16 is a little bit brighter than the 24 and the 28. However, they can still blend nicely. And it kind of creates a, a different look to it. So we'll start with the B28. And go again with that kind of flick motion. And then we'll go in with the B16. Then we have the B24. As you can see, this can also create a nice gradient, although they are from different brightness or uh, saturations they create a fairly decent gradient from dark to light and it kind of would looks a little bit different than it does when you just do all the same um, saturation okay. the next example that I'm giving you is going to be using colors from different color families that are still similar. So, for example, I'm doing blue and blue-green, and with these ones, I'm going from like a, a darker blue to a lighter blue-green, and this is actually supposed to be BG13, sorry. So, starting with the B18, Start at the very back and do a little flicking motion. The only thing I can think of to explain this is in Harry Potter, when you do Guardian Leviosa, swish and flick. So flick your markers. And we're going to go into B16. Do the same thing. Now into BG 
13. So this one's going to look a little bit different. And then after that, I'm going to do BG10. I didn't flick so much on that one, so it's not blending out so well. And this is why when you flick your marker, it's really good to make sure you get the lighter at the end, because it blends out a lot easier. So I especially like these colors if you're doing like a a beach scene. You do further back in the landscape, you do the darker blues, and then you come up into these like blue greens makes a nice kind of sea effect. And now although you can blend colors from very similar color families, it's a little that's a little bit easier than doing it from completely different color families. So here I have a B28. And R24 that I will be trying to blend. So as you will see, these ones don't like to blend as much. They kind of just because they're such different colors, they don't really like each other very much. So as you can see, these two just do not like to blend. You'll get that hard line and then it's kind of weird looking color in the middle. So one way to combat that, however, is by using colors that are similar to the two first colors in color family to blend in the middle. So I have B28 here, and then I can move on to blue violet 04, then red violet 04, and then I have red 24. So, we'll start with B28. Okay. Then we'll move on to red violet 04. So you can see these two blend a little bit easier than the red and the blue did. Then we'll move on to red violet 04. Of course coming into the blue violet and the blue. Just kind of trying to blend that out as much as possible. Sometimes it takes a little bit of working. And then after that, we then we go into our R24. Okay, now although it doesn't quite blend and have a nice gradient like some of these ones do, it's still a little bit nicer than this one. 
Now, if you'd like to practice blending, the easiest way I found to do that without, you know, sketching out a full picture and just practicing on a picture that you don't know if it's going to come out very well or not, or if you want to see if colors blend nicely, I like to do these cylinders. This is a technique that my art teacher taught me in high school. He had a, he'd print out um, sheets of these cylinders and just have us practice shading with either pencils, colored pencils, whatever medium we were using at the time. So this will work for pretty much anything. So what you can do, let's say we want to try the blues here. Get out the color B28. And then just start from the darker side and try to start blending it out. And we'll go to our B16. Last but not least, B24. Of course, you have to shade the top of the cylinder too, which means you're going to put the darker side on the right here because the way I see it is the cylinder is empty on the inside so it's going to cast a shadow then we'll go back to our B16 and our B24 Now I'll finish shading in these last two cylinders with the red and the blue here and then the blue and the blue green, but I'm going to speed that part up for you. That should be just about it for our tutorial. There's just one more thing I would like to mention. If you get Copic markers, I would highly recommend keeping them clean. As you can see, mine are fairly dirty. I really need to clean them. Easiest way to do it would probably be just to clean them after each picture that you use with them. That way you're just cleaning the ones that you used and you don't have to go through and clean all of them like I probably will later today. Um, the reason it's a good idea to keep them clean is if you can see there are all these little dots all over the paper and that is from there being ink on the inside of the cap when I take the cap off it sprays ink everywhere. So if you don't want all those little dots over a nice pretty drawing that you're doing I highly recommend keeping them clean. I should really probably follow my own advice on that. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching. I hope if you're watching this, this helped some of you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, I know I'm not very good at explaining things, so if you have questions, definitely ask. I'd be happy to answer them. So if you'd like to see more videos, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!